Thank you everybody for joining us today for the uh, fifth installment of our ongoing series of uh, video podcasts, uh, uh, Juricom Shop Talk, where we bring in media and communications professionals from around the area to uh, share their uh, knowledge. Uh, today we are lucky enough to have Abby Reinhardt join us. Welcome, Abby. Uh, Abby is a, a communications professional with, uh, who has been working in the field for the past six years and has worked a wide range of jobs uh, from web specialists in academia to working with the public uh, as a park ranger during the summer. She's also worked for KUOW Radio, Humanities Washington, and the University of Washington Tacoma. Uh, currently, Abby is a communications specialist at the University of Washington where she's also completing her master's studies in museum studies. Welcome, Abby. First off, uh, I think my students uh, often come into my class knowing what a reporter is. They've seen journalists in movies, and then I bring in people with titles like communication specialists. What is a communication specialist? That's a good question. Um, so I can tell you what I currently do at my position where that's my title. I can also tell you what I used to do at another position where that was my title. But I think it's a good question because that varies so much depending on where you work, right? Uh, I think that title probably, uh, you know, like how you can look at a Google uh, like frequency of word use and like something gets much more common, like the word, I don't know, internet started getting used in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, right? Um, and I think communication specialist, I would bet, is you know exponentially growing in the past. 10 years, right? Um, so I can tell you what I do, um, but I think it often gets used for a variety of job postings. So um, I would probably look at the details of the job posting for each place. Do you, do you yeah, want to know what I do though? My next question <laughs> yeah. on those, what does a typical day at your job look like right now? Yeah, so currently I am a communication specialist for the UW in the College of Education. Uh, and so that looks like, um, basically I think a lot of places that maybe didn't used to think of themselves as public facing are starting to realize that they have to get the get their work out there a little bit more. Um, and so I work with a, a group of researchers in the College of Education trying to take the research that they do and um, kind of translate it for classroom teachers. So they're doing a lot of work on new science standards, and so I'm working with them to take their kind of academic research and jargon and translate it into kind of two-page briefs that classroom teachers can pick up and use. Uh, so a typical day, um, totally varies, um, but I do a lot of um, kind of working to produce new tools, so that's um, often by you know, collaboration over Google Docs, but we might have a meeting to talk about some ideas that some people have had, um, and then um, kind of taking their writing and trying to basically translate it. Um, there's a lot also of kind of graphic design that goes into that as well, um, which uh, I am fairly self-taught at. Um, but you know, they, I'm, I'm the only communications person working on this team, so uh, it's a lot of um, taking photos, putting together well-designed kind of pieces. Uh, occasionally I've done video, um, it totally depends. Yeah, how much of, of what you have done in this role and previous roles is self-taught? Uh, I mean, compared to what? Like, uh, compared to uh, if I asked, uh, like a mentor taught me, or that I learned in school? Well, you can, looking, looking at your academic background, you, you went to Whitman and you have a you majored in history. Yeah. And somehow you became a communications professional. Talk a little bit about kind of your journey to that and how you have gotten as good as you are in the communications field. Thanks. Thanks for that assumption. Um, the, um, yeah, so I graduated with a degree in history. I'm really interested in telling stories and people stories and um, kind of too many different things to, made, to have majored in something more specific than everything that's ever happened in the past. So that's why I majored in history. Um, but I graduated and was trying to find a job. Um, and so I uh, was reaching out to um, organizations that I thought were doing cool things. Um, and had some writing skills from undergrad. Uh, so I think some of those writing skills were things that I learned in school, but everything else in terms of how to write for the public, um, graphic design, um, and photography is all things that you kind of, uh, have you heard of like, you know, the internet uh, has a lot of videos. <laughs> 
Um, or uh, you'll take somebody out to coffee and kind of ask them, like, how did you get good at photography? Um, so I don't think anything self-taught, like I'm in a room with a camera and suddenly I got good at photography, but often a lot of like online tutorials and things like that. And probably, probably a lot of hit and miss with jumping into a project and seeing how it turns out? Yeah, I tend to uh, like to get into the sandbox and play around um, rather than figure out exactly how I'm going to do something before I do it. I'd like to kind of to walk through because a lot of uh, the students in this class um, are thinking about how to get that first job, you know, kind of walking through your career. And I happen to, uh, to know a little bit about Abby's background because uh, uh, she worked at Humanities Washington and came in as a volunteer. So it seems like volunteering and interning were both kind of crucial to you getting your toes in the doors of multiple organizations. Yeah, so I went to undergrad in Walla Walla, Washington, so not a lot of opportunities to intern while I was in school at the types of organizations that I wanted to uh, work at. Um, I probably could have done more of that, um, but really I was doing my interning and volunteering during the summer. Um, and so I did that at a variety of organizations that I thought were doing cool things. Uh, the Museum of History and Industry in Seattle, KUOW Radio in Seattle, uh, and then at Humanities Washington. Um, and so in all of these cases, I would take a job that kind of um, paid the bills and gave me like 30 to 40 hours a week um, doing something like, um, I worked at a uh, state park doing kind of um, lawn care basically. Uh, and then on my weekends or my days off, I would intern. Um, and so that was a good way to get something on my resume that looked a little bit more like what I wanted to do while still making some money. Um, I think if you go to school in a metropolitan area like Everett, you can maybe do it in school and get credit for it. Yeah, it's one of the, one of the powerful, powerful things about being on the I-5 corridor. One of the big advantages that WSU Everett has over Pullman is that they can actually require internships because they have so many available mm -hmm. uh, from Everett all the way down to Olympia. Uh, oftentimes the kids from Pullman are coming back home just to get the internship, very much the experience that you had as well. Um, that volunteering experience that where you got your toe in the door places you know, absolutely worked because when you came into Volunteer Humanities Washington, uh, I saw communications work at previous gigs and it's like, oh, I'll try this person out as a volunteer. Um, and then you, you really seized the opportunity there. That led to a paid internship and by the time you got done with uh, your paid internship, we kept you on full time. Um, so, you know, kind of, kind of talk about, you know, going into an experience where it's like, volunteering somewhere, how, how do you go about turning that into a job? I think I got pretty lucky, so that was part of it. Um, but I also think that um, one important thing was that when I sat down to do a more official internship, you and I talked about kind of tangible goals and deliverables, right? Uh, which really made it so that I knew that when I showed up, I wouldn't just be getting coffee and like uh, filing, right? There's some of that too. Um, but I would have things that I knew that I could put on my resume or bring up in a future job interview, right? I was going to have written 10 stories that would go up on the Humanities Washington blog. I was going to learn how to, again, take photos. I think I did a little bit of that. Um, things like that that I, you know, we talked about um, kind of both what I wanted on my resume and what I wanted um, some mentor mentorship or help on. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things we're having academic support for your internship. You, you were graduated at that point um, and happened to come to work for somebody who was an educator, so knew to do those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes you do end up otherwise in those coffee getting jobs. Uh, one of the things that I do with all of my students here is I will uh, kind of uh, check out their internships and then we have an academic framework we put in place with the host site mm -hmm. to make sure it's like, yes, they can do this, this, and this, but here are the, again, the deliverables that the student needs to see to make sure it's a good education experience. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, really quick. Um, I would also, um, if I could have done one thing differently, uh, it would be that I think I often um, thought about internships just at places that were nonprofit that didn't really pay. But there are a lot of internships since that I've seen that do pay in some way. Um, Student Conservation Association gives an um, academic stipend at the end of your um, time with them. And I've seen a ton of stuff up there on their website um, that is pretty communications focused for like summer jobs, things like that. 
And there are also some agencies out there that give, like a Society of Professional Journalism, mm -hmm. or Professional Journalist has actually an internship fund where they will actually pay for internships at newspapers because they know newspapers can't afford them anymore. So um, oftentimes what I've found is some of my community college students will do unpaid internships here, but it unlocks the door for paid internships during junior and senior year. So, awesome. so uh, um, after Humanities Washington, uh, you ended up going down to the University of Tacoma. Actually, let me back up a little bit. Talk about the nonprofit sector a little bit. It's something that a lot of students, I, I know even as a journalist, I covered nonprofits, but I didn't realize how big of a part of our economy they are. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a different environment. What were, what were some of the strengths and weaknesses of working in the nonprofit sector? I mean, you worked at KUOW, you worked at Humanities Washington, you got a lot of that, and kind of even in the museum world um, that you're familiar with. It's like, you know, talk a little bit about the nonprofit sector. Yeah, sure. Uh, in preparing to show up today, I watched some of the other uh, videos. Mm -hmm. Comtop, Com Shop Talk. videos. <laughs> Just roll top the top. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, you had David Haldeman already yep. to talk, right? Okay, so I won't spend too, too long talking about um, that just because I think he did a great job covering it. Um, but I think um, nonprofit sector is super varied. So again, I'm just talking about my experiences. Um, but I think you get a lot of really passionate people. Um, and so your coworkers are often uh, the best part of your job. Um, getting to kind of see real impact of what you're doing is also wonderful um, in terms of the programs that you do. It's a little bit interesting to do communications for a nonprofit compared to like a marketing firm or something like that because your um, way of measuring success is a little bit different, right? Uh, you're not looking at like how many widgets did we sell. Uh, you're kind of um, impact is a little bit more ambiguous, right? Um, it might be how many programs did we get people to show up to, but it might be a little bit more um, hard to measure. Um, did, did you find in the nonprofit sector that mission match, it's something I talk to my students about a lot, does mission match help? Is that your belief in the mission of where right. you're working? Yeah, I don't think I've ever worked for somewhere where I haven't believed in their mission. Um, and I think that's important to me. Um, I think I would probably get bored if I didn't believe in the mission. So when you left Humanities Washington, you uh, moved to the University of Washington, to, or sorry, you left Humanities Washington, you went to the University of Washington, Tacoma. Mm -hmm. um, so you left the nonprofit sector for academia, in some ways very similar, in some ways very different. Can I talk a little bit about doing communications work within academia? Yeah, so in my first job uh, with UW, uh, UW Tacoma, um, which is a satellite or branch campus down there, even though they don't like that term, uh, but like UW Bothell, um, and it was really, really similar to working in a nonprofit, right? I was um, within the development department, but writing stories that they were kind of using um, both to let people know what's going on on campus. Kind of like an EBCC homepage probably has a news section, right? Um, about what's going on. Uh, and then they would also share those with donors, right? To let them know kind of, um, you know, some of the star stories about what, what your students are up to. Um, and so you've got both purposes, right? To inform the campus community, but also a little bit to raise money. Um, but in both cases, you're really just trying to tell stories of what's going on on campus, um, or what's going on as kind of inspired by your nonprofit. Um, so again, storytelling in both cases. Um, this current job uh, in the College of Education is a lot more different. Um, it's a lot more trying to produce tools rather than tell narrative stories. And within the communications uh, sector, there's a lot of jobs on the media, uh, media production side. A lot of your jobs are kind of focused on that. Um, but during the summertime, you work with a park ranger doing interpretation, yeah. which is very much seems to be more on the face-to-face -face, uh, end of the communication spectrum. Uh, talk a little bit about that and also kind of compare and contrast the media production versus the face-to-face -face stuff. Yeah, I think that was uh, exactly, I think you've gotten to exactly why I wanted to do that sort of work during the summer. Um, I really like telling stories. I was feeling kind of um, like all I did was stare at a computer um, and I still stare at a computer a lot. Um, and um, that's not to say that I wasn't enjoying the work that I was doing uh, during the school year, but I really wanted a chance to get out there and face-to-face uh, -face kind of do some of that 
same storytelling work uh, in person and maybe get a little bit more feedback um, from the people I was talking to. Uh, you get that some with uh, digital communications through social media, but it's not really the same or it didn't feel quite the same. Um, and so this has sort of been an, another way in which I've sort of taken that same strategy I had when I graduated of getting a job that, you know, I've got some skills to do and pays a bit more and then doing the thing I'm sort of hoping to move into on the side. Um, but now I'm doing it um, to try to kind of transition careers to a little bit more of an in-person interpretation and storytelling. The last, last question I uh, will leave uh, leave you with, Abby, is um, we've got a group of college students in front of you right now. What one thing do you wish you would have known when you were in college to better prepare you for the professional world? Mm. I know. Um, think about that. I think um, one thing that I do more that maybe I didn't when I was first starting my career is to ask myself, so what? Um, you, right, like you'll write something and you'll you'll be like, this is, I think this is a really cool event that's going on. I think people need to know about it because I think it's cool. Um, but to be able to articulate why somebody should actually care about it or they should actually show up uh, is something that, you know, um, I do much more often and right away when I start writing about something now. Whereas kind of I would um, write something and then be like, oh yeah, I should probably add a paragraph about why people should care. Uh, and so that's kind of been a little bit more of a shift for me. Very good. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.